Okay, I gotta tell you, I'm not very happy with what just happened because I just did a 40 minute lecture on this and went to go stop the video and found out it had stopped itself about five minutes into it. So now you've got a partially completed African wild dog face here in front of you. This is my original photo that I was working from. You can see that like the nose and so on has a lot of blues and stuff in it. This is the drawing where I've taken it to, to at this point. So I'm gonna go through and kind of do some more work on this guy, just when I thought I was gonna be uploading this video and kind of show you a little bit about what I do. What I had mentioned in the beginning part was my first step is basically doing something that I think of as a construction drawing where I just roughly block it in. I like to use colors like the brick reds or sometimes I will use light blue or mid blues for it. Now, a lot of times I'll do like the initial drawing in like a brick red or even this like kind of more terracotta red. And then I'll come back and do my corrections in another color, whether it's yellow or blue. I'll do my corrections with that. Um, as I start blocking it in, you can see if you um, are looking at the photo that these areas are actually pretty light and you might think of them as not having a lot of color. But obviously I've brought a lot of color into this guy as I've been working on them. So one thing that I recommend is on your bottom layers to separate out your values and keep your values pretty accurate. I'm gonna come in, I'm hitting just a little bit of this um, brick color in here is my underlying value and then what I did is I came in with some of this medium ochre that I've got in my box and used that to hit the tone that I actually wanted to get to on top. Um, my bottom layers I do a lot more blending so you notice just now that I ran my finger over it to softly blend it. If you're on really rough asphalt you can tear a piece of the styrofoam out and use this to do the blending instead. But I do prefer, that's basically what this little square is here, but I do prefer to use my finger when I can. Um, just, I get a little better. The, 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 the styrofoam tends to kind of lift the pastel at the same time that it's blending it. And with my finger, I don't have that issue. Um, One of the things I really like about painting animals, I, I've painted people for years, I've done lots of painting, copies of paintings, 3D paintings, whatever it is. But one of the things I really prefer about animals is that there's always something new as far as like the textures and colors. And I really love bringing some of their, um, their character into what I'm doing. So I've really enjoyed the last number of years doing a lot of animal paintings and trying to get some sense of kind of a personality in the animal that I'm drawing. I've always loved African wild dogs, are one of my favorites. I've never drawn one. So I thought, well, this will be a fun opportunity for me to work on that. My underlying browns and the darks in this animal actually have a lot of violets violets, browns, blues, and so you can kind of see that I brought a lot of that out within my painting. A lot of times people will look at a photo like this and they'll go like, it's brown, black, and light yellow. That's what they'll see. And they will miss all the range of colors that they could really bring into things here to make this more beautiful. So it's one of the things I really enjoy is that there's all this freedom to kind of do all these things with color and skin tones are wonderful like doing people and skin tones but you know there's only so much and sometimes it gets a little bit boring especially when you do a lot of these and I've been doing this for many years now oh my word almost 30 years <laughs> getting older by the minute and um and so it's, you know, I think the move to animals just happened because I was kind of bored with people at some point. And um, animals just had a, a lot going for them as far as like the texture and the changes and what you could do as far as the mood of the painting and stuff like that. So I tend to start out with, um, with darker and richer colors underneath and then move up to less saturated colors as I move top layers. One of the beauties of pastel is that it um, it allows you to kind of scumble color on top of color 
and have those colors interact with each other without blending them. And I know that a lot of times people just move very quickly to blending, but to me, it's like, that's not what I'm interested in. One of the things I don't like is a lot of blending because really when you're blending colors together, all you're doing is flattening out two or three or four colors into one color again. Um, but I think the interaction of those colors against each other is actually more beautiful. And I, I guess you would think of like a Seurat painting or a Monet or something like that, that you can really build a lot of um, interaction of color into what you're doing if you just kind of control it. And then it's easy enough if you're doing a lot of color and then all of a sudden it's just getting too colorful, you just come on top with a desaturated color, a gray or a brown or black or whatever it is that makes sense to what you're doing um, and push it back again, make it less saturated. So I can take these areas here where I've got a little bit more of that teal color and kind of hit them back. You'll notice on these top layers now that I'm doing a very light mark making. Um, one of my kind of pet peeves at festivals is working near somebody that just creates lots of pieces of chalk laying around and lots of dust because they might think that they're, that's what they do and that's their style. But the fact of the matter is that their style is going to get all over your painting. As soon as a, a slight breeze hits, as soon as it sits overnight while you're gone, you're going to come back. And all your things are going to be dull because all the dust that they created is going to be sitting on it. And really, you can't get away from that. Like, there's a certain part that no matter what you do, that's what's going to happen. But you can certainly minimize it. When you're working next to somebody who's creating piles of chalk, what they're doing is they're basically creating piles of chalk to go all over their painting and your painting. And it's just really nice of them to share like that. And I'd rather they don't. So I really encourage you also, I think as far as like just a planet concept of taking care of our planet and of not being wasteful with our materials and economically, it's like, why? You know, there's it, if you can't create the richness by the way you're interacting the color, then don't like use that as a crutch. It, it can be kind of a crutch for some people to create richness, but there are other ways to create that sense of richness. And a lot of it is really in the way that you're going to use the colors and build them up on top of each other. You can take colors you might not think of as being used on an African wild dog and kind of bring them in and then just knock them back a little bit. And if you draw kind of lightly with what you're doing so that it doesn't become like this heavy mark making that you're creating a lot of dust, it's super easy to go back over something like this and just go, well, that's a little bit too green for me. Let me hit some gray on it. Kind of soften it down just a little bit. And that gray helps create a transition to the rest and it's softening down that color, but it's still allowing that color to be part of what you're doing as you build up that light. Um, I'm careful with my whites. I don't add much white. I use it um, very sparingly and to create like accents where I want them. So if you really look closely at this painting, you'll notice that there's only little bits of white here in the eye. There, I just hit that little bit of light here, and I used a little bit of it primarily here at the front part of the fur, because even if I see a lot of white back here, if I hit this too white, it's going to pop it forward. So I'm creating a sense of visual depth within the, the head of the animal by increasing the light up towards the front of the face and letting the back part of the face kind of fade out. And I'll do that over and over. Like, obviously, if you've got something like a bunch of white fur in the ear, I'm not gonna hit it in with a gray. I'm gonna hit some white on it at some point, but I am careful about it. Predominantly, when I laid in these areas in here, I used this violet tone that I've got out of my new pastels um, and kind of hit that back in there. I used a little bit of brown to knock it back so that it didn't become overly purple. And I'm still kind of scumbling some of that brown and blacks back on here because I want that color without it becoming, a, I'm not trying to create a neon piece. Now maybe your goal is to hit really bright colors. That's great. That's some people's style. I like to hit more towards like a realism, but a realism that's a little bit heightened. So a little bit like of these accents of color and richness and so on, but not so much that you're looking at it going, look at that neon African wild dog. Okay, so as I, if I hit some of that stuff in, I'm going to come back 
and probably knock it back just a tad so it doesn't feel too bright. And I'm constantly paying attention to how I want to build like the light that's coming in one area versus the shadow that's in another. So I start getting the construction and the planes and the form on the head so that it has some real, a real feeling of depth to it. I'm so irritated that my camera shut off. I can't even tell you. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to paint and I'm just super irritated with my camera for shutting off. So actually should make sure. Yes, we're still videotaping. Good. <laughs> can't even imagine if that had happened a second time. Okay. So I've got like a, a little bit of like hair down here. And I can see, I want to hit this back just a little because it's a little purple for what I want. I just want a little bit of that purplish tone in here. So I'm hitting some black back into it to kind of knock it down a little bit. I'll probably come back in and hit some brown as well because this area is darker down here. And I'm going to hit some black and then I'm going to hit a couple other colors before I actually tone this. So... It's not quite as exciting as doing the face, but the face is a lot of the way done and I'm not gonna redo the whole face again. So let's try hitting some tone in there and then I'm gonna hit a little bit of brown and I'm probably gonna put a little bit of violet in this as well because I want it to read like it's part of the, the same darkness that's defining things up above. I know I'm gonna have to hit more black in this area, but I'm gonna do it after I've kind of blended some of this back. This is my underlying layer. And a lot of times in the underlying layer, like I said, I like to get a little bit more of the, the richer colors in there, the more saturated colors, but I also want to really pay attention and keep my values correct. So don't come in and like make it a light purple and then now, now how am I going to make it darker? So now I can come through and kind of blend this and these colors are working. And notice I'm not doing a heavy blend. I'm not trying to make it perfectly smooth. I'm just trying to get the colors together. <laughs> And I'm going to come back and hit some of the violet in here now that I've filled in the asphalt. And I'm going to take this black pastel. It's a little different from the other one. Kind of hit some of this deeper shadow back here. And I will probably need to hit this black back a little bit because the black, um, you want it to read more like a value normally unless you're using it to like outline something at the end. But you want it to read more like a deep shadow. And shadows don't have lines and stuff in them. They're a little bit uh, more mysterious than that. I don't know how to word it better, but they are. They're a little bit more obscure. Okay, so if I hit this black and make it pretty dark... And then use my finger to soften it back again... So that starts to feel a little bit more like the shadow underneath. Uh, I'm going to redevelop some of this chin. Because now that I've worked the shadow under it, it's lost a little bit of its dimension. Which is fine. I kind of like the push and pull of what I do with street painting. It's one of the things I really love about doing the paintings is coming back and drawing things and then refining things and then redrawing some areas. So a lot of that happens as I'm working naturally. I'm not going to go through and try and get every hair, but I'm going to get enough to get the sense of like the hairs being there. And I'm going to bring mouth just a little bit deeper in here and what I'm doing is I'm applying more pressure here where it's darker and then lightening up my touch on the pastel so that I get that feeling of the pastel fading rather than using the blending so I use a lot of my hand pressure to basically finish what I'm doing with it I don't do blending as much as I use my hand pressure to do it and I'm just trying to redefine this edge here Maybe even get a little bit of blacks right in here. 
I'm gonna come in with a, that might be, this one's a little too bright. Let me see if I can find a better color for that. This. Let me hit some of this down here. I don't wanna pull it out too much, but it does have a little bit more lightness and texture. And I love that lightness and texture, so I don't wanna lose it. And then I'll go ahead and work on the other eye since the camera shut off and you didn't get to see that. And um, let's get the black. Now, when I look at this photo, the eye doesn't have a lot of color. It's basically brown, a um, little bit of black, but I like to bring in a little bit more color to it. The And you might not see it so much in the photo right now, but there's a little bit of peach in here. There's a little bit of an olive green and a touch of some blues. And that creates a lot of richness to it. That's really nice for looking at when you're looking at the painting. It gives it kind of more of a resonance to what you're doing as well. So I hit a little bit of brown in here first. I'm going to bring my finger and just kind of soften that down. And then I'm going to come in with... Um, a little of the rust, kind of recapture some of the shape of that pupil. Just because the pastel is pretty rough, so it's hard to hold on to some of those things. And sometimes the way to hold on to it is just to draw back around it again. And I'm trying to remember what I used on the first one. I should I normally would do one eye right after the other so that I have all the same colors in mind. But I was doing it as a quick demo. So I know I used some of this color. I used a touch of this olive green and I love the way the olive green interacts with the brown. It's really nice for kind of desaturating but still keeping it warm. I'll use some of that at the back end. I think I'm actually gonna hit a tiny bit of more of a red up here at the front. And then there's some blues in the fur. Like over here, what I had hit was kind of the underlying blue that is the, it's basically the skin of the animal. It's just got a lot of cool light on it. And I wanna do the same thing over here. I think I wanna use a little bit of this up above. Brighten it just a tad. And then a little bit of gray to hit this reflection that's going over the eye. It's got a tiny bit of blue in it from the sky reflecting. And a little bit of white at the edge. And I gotta come back with my black pastel and just make sure I'm happy with this pupil. I'm gonna hit the tip of it a little bit more and probably look like I added some lights in this eye that you don't necessarily see in the photo, but that's one of the things that's nice about doing eyes is adding just a little bit more descriptive, like highlights, it makes it feel like the moisture that's on the eye and really kind of pops things out for you. I'm gonna add a little bit more white on this side. Notice when I blow, there's not a lot of dust sitting on here. There's an unevenness right here in my asphalt. It kind of gathered up some darker tones. So soften that. So um, I apologize that this didn't film correctly, <laughs> but hopefully this kind of shows you a little bit about like how I handle some of these colors. And um, 
and the way that I build up the light. Um, I like to kind of use my colors to cancel each other out more than like finding the right color immediately. So like if this is feeling too yellow, that's why I'm kind of coming in right now with the peach. The peach tones it down a little, makes it a little less saturated. Then I could come back in with my cream, kind of hit some of these lights to get it to come a little bit more forward. And I'm going to hit them more at the front, even though I can see the light at the back. What I want is to be always aware of how to build the depth. Lights come forward and darks recede. So if I bring some of my lights up here and let the dark or the less saturated color go towards the back part, it's going to build a better sense of depth overall. Depending on what you're painting, maybe that's not so important to you, but because I typically am doing a lot of 3D paintings and making up a lot of stuff when I paint, I always have to consider that because that's an important part of what I'm doing as far as creating the painting. He's kind of a handsome guy. Not perfect, but I'll darken some of this a little bit more. Don't feel like everything has to be outlined perfectly. Remember that if something's in the shadows and you can't see it all, it's okay to knock it back and keep it in the shadows. And then up here in the ear, I know that this is gone now. Um, I mean, the video didn't take, but um, I used a, a peaches, um, brick colors, browns, a little bit of violets, some black, and kind of built my underlying tones here. Thank you, Cody. Kind of built my underlying tones here. And then on top of that, I used like a little bit lighter version of peach or yellow or whatever it was and I build up the lights on top that gives me a natural feeling of kind of the shadowing that happens behind fur or texture but also even if I have something that's a solid color I'll kind of show you what I mean on this let's say I was going to black uh, darken in this background and make it a blue sky so I'll go ahead and color this in I'm gonna use a little bit of this blue with it And then I might come through and kind of blend this. But you can see how it kind of flattens it down, right? So if I come through after I've done that and I do another layer of blue on top and maybe vary the color a little bit. So let's say I use a slightly different blue. You can see how that underlying more turquoisey green blue kind of shows through. And if you even take something that's like a flat color, like say a blue background sky or something, and you choose two different colors that are pretty close to each other, but there's a little bit of difference, you'll just get a little bit more richness to it. So it feels like a brighter color overall. And part of that is because you've got the interaction of these two colors against each other. But part of it is also because you lay this other lighter color on top of this blended color and the lighter color um, isn't being blended and so it retains more brightness to the pigment. As a lot of times when you blend, you can see that it really like loses some of the color that you're trying to build in there, right? So here's my original color. I blend it down and it, and it loses a lot of it because it's now it's being spread out those same bright lines. But if I come back in and kind of hit it again, like I don't necessarily want this color in this area, but if I hit it again, or if I even look at it and go, gosh, I've got like a lot of violets in here and I can kind of have like that rust along with some purple, I can hit it in there and I can soften it and keep it more in these shadow areas like it should be. And then I might even come in again with another color and say, okay, I want to hit a little bit more light. So the interaction of these colors that if you were to blend them together, they might just look like a bunch of mud, but 
when you allow them to sit next to each other, they can really create um, some beautiful effects, especially when you're looking at like textures, like fur texture or whatever it is, um, the texture of fabric or whatever. You can really create a beautiful effect if you handle that stuff well. Starting to get as rough. Okay. All right. Sorry I erased the other video. <laughs> Let me move this a little closer. Because um, I know from a distance it might be kind of hard to see. So you can kind of see like what I mean about the brightness of that. Here we're coming down into the face. Um, kind of see like the eyes and so on. And here's some of the texture on like some of that area I was just touching. All right. Good luck.